What's up guys and welcome to the channel. It's Ioana here, founder and CEO of Subwell. Today I wanted to dive into a subject that I've seen a ton online about recently and just discussed in the running community and that is these super trainer running shoes. Now, well, there's been a lot of new shoes released in this category and a lot of discourse around what are the best super trainers. I really wanted to put some thought around how are we defining this category, one, and two, how are we thinking about using these shoes over the long haul. So let's get into it. First, what are super trainers? Super trainers fill that gap between everyday running shoes, which we call daily trainers, and then those marathon racing shoes, which we call super shoes. I first heard Nick from the Run Testers use this term and attribute it to Believe in the Run. Thank you, Believe in the Run, and thank you, Run Testers, for coming up with this term. What I want to do here is put some more rigor around what really makes a super trainer a super trainer. So I came up with four key elements. That I think shoes need to hit at least three out of these four in order to be called super trainers. All right, so first up, we got a plate. That can be a carbon fiber plate or a plastic plate. We see brands calling it a nylon plate or a PVAX plate. It's not gonna be the same PVAX as that super foam, but more of that plastic plate. Or it can be a carbon composite plate or even, I would say, a midfoot shank, but some sort of reinforcement that's adding rigidity and pop to the platform. All right, second, we got sub nine ounce weight. Super trainers need to be coming in at that sub nine ounce range in order to be considered as part of this category. Generally, daily trainers are in that eight to 10 ounce range and we see speed shoes and six to nine ounces and super trainers, most of them are coming in below that nine ounce range. Third criteria for being a, a super trainer is you gotta have the brand's best foam. That can be a PIPA foam, that can be a super critical EVA, that can be a super critical TPE like the Adidas Light Strike Pro, but you gotta have at least in one of the foams used in the shoe, you gotta have that best foam. Now there's a few shoes on this list here that we'll get into in a second that do have multiple foams. That dual foam midsole is pretty common in this category, but one of those foams has gotta be top tier. And finally, the last criteria to be considered a super trainer is you gotta have some of the same design elements. In the midsole geometry, the upper, the naming, the vibe, it's gotta be carried through from the Marathon Racer. These shoes are positioned as training companions a lot of the time to that top tier racing shoe. So to be considered a super trainer, you gotta have some of the elements of that shoe. Now in terms of the trainer part of the equation, what are we getting that's more similar to a daily trainer and a super trainer? Where that comes in is these shoes tend to have a bit more durability than super shoes that are designed for racing. We see on a lot of these super trainers, they have really solid outsole coverings. So they're gonna be more resilient and resistant over the long term. They also tend to come in 50 to $75 cheaper than their super shoe components. And I think that's an important part of the equation too, right? If you have a $250 shoe, you should not be calling it a super trainer. At that point, that should be something that you race in. So most of these super trainers we're seeing are $200 or below. 160 to 180 is really the core of this market. We'll see, I think, nearly every single one of the shoes that we're gonna go through in a second fits in that. So in terms of what counts as a super trainer, let me go through this list real quick. First up, we got the Nike Tempo Next Percent. This pioneered the category. It was that training companion to the Alpha Fly. It dropped in 2020 to replace the Peg Turbo. It doesn't get a lot of love and shine because it is a three-year-old shoe, but it pioneered the super trainer category. And the reason it exists here is because it meets these criteria. It has that Zumex p foam. It's the training companion to the Nike Alpha Fly. It has a carbon composite plate and it has a sub nine ounce weight at 8.9 ounces. All right, next we got the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 that has a Piba foam, a nylon plate, a sub nine ounce weight, and it's a training companion to the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3. We got the New Balance SC Trainer V2 that uses the top tier fuel cell super critical TPU foam. It has a carbon fiber plate and it doesn't have a sub nine ounce weight, but it does meet three out of four of our criteria. So we're classifying it as a super trainer. Next up, we got the A6 Magic Speed 3. This has a carbon fiber plate. It has a sub nine ounce weight at 7.7 .7 ounces for that US men's nine sample size. And it's positioned as a training companion to the Metaspeed Edge and Sky. While it doesn't have the brand's best foam, it does have a full length carbon fiber plate. If they were gonna use the best foam 
and this thing would be the same exact thing as the Metaspeed Edge and Sky. And this FF Blast Plus foam that they have in the A6 Magic Speed is one of the best foams on the market today. It's in shoes like the Nova Blast, the Nimbus, and the Cumulus. It's super soft and responsive, almost as good as some other brands' racing foams. So this definitely falls into the super trainer category. Next up, we got the Deviate Nitro 2. This has a dual foam midsole. One of the foams is that super critical Piba called Nitro Elite. We also got a carbon plate in here and a similar setup to Puma's racing shoe. All right, next we got the Hoka Mach X. This has Piba in it like the Rocket X2. It's got that plastic plate and it's not coming in at under nine ounces. Uh, it is a bit on the heavier side, just like that New Balance. We're still classifying it as a super trainer because of that plate and foam combination. And finally, we got the Adidas Boston 12. That's got the Light Strike Pro Super Critical Foam. It's got a plate in there. There's energy rods from Adidas, and it's the training companion to the Adidas Audi Zero Pro 3. And again, this one is weighing in at over nine ounces, but it is still a super trainer. These are gonna be great. If they're gonna inspire you to get out the door and to, to reach for more on your training days, go ahead and grab for a super trainer. I have the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3 and I love it. You know, when I wanna do a faster everyday run, not necessarily a structured workout, I'll pull for that. It does make me feel faster and a bit snappier. But for regular training, I like going for non-plated shoes and I do think it's good for us to mix both plated shoes with non-plated shoes. I also, if I wanna feel fast, I'll just go for one of my regular plated shoes, like my Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 or the Nike Vaporfly. So I, I don't think there's an entirely a need for this market segment, but there was some white space and brands saw that they could capture value by creating this category. And it's a copycat world, so once Nike started the trend with the next percent and the Saucony Endorphin Speed took off, now every brand has got to participate in this market. We will see how this continues to evolve over the next few years, whether this is going to be a category with lasting staying power or if this is just a temporary fad. I will put my money on the temporary fad section. I do think carbon plates are here to stay, but I don't think we need to be running in plated shoes every day. All right guys, so there you have it. That was a breakdown of super trainers, what they are and how we should use them. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on super trainers. Thank you for following and liking. I'll make sure to keep you up to date on the latest and greatest in the world of performance running.